In America, everyone counts, and the 2020 census is how that great promise is kept. Respond today online, by phone, or by mail, and help inform hundreds of billions in funding for education, health programs, and more. Shape your future. Start at 2020census.gov. So today in a news conference, ABC's Jonathan Carl. You know what? Since, of course, it's time for Trump Lives Matter, go ahead and run it. Well, again, John Carl of ABC News uh, had, you know, the guts to ask Donald Trump today about that Bob Woodward book where he admitted downplaying coronavirus, but then the rest of the public, oh, everything is fine. We got it under control. Watch this exchange and just, just count the lies. Mr. President, why did you lie to the American people and why should we trust what you have to say Such now? Such a terrible question and the phraseology I didn't lie. What I said is we have to be calm. We can't be panicked. Uh, I knew that the tapes were there. These were a series of phone calls that we had, mostly phone calls. And uh, Bob Woodward is somebody that uh, I respect just from hearing the name for many, many years, not knowing too much about his work, not caring about his work. But I thought it would be interesting to talk to him for a period of, you know, calls. So we did that. I don't know if it's good or bad. I don't even know if the book is good or bad. But uh, certainly if uh, he thought that was a bad statement, he would have reported it because he thinks that, you know, you don't want to have anybody that uh, is going to suffer medically because of some fact. And he didn't report it because he didn't think it was bad. Nobody thought it was bad. Wait a minute, wait a minute. And your question, the way you phrase that is such a disgrace. It's a disgrace to ABC Television Network. It's a disgrace to your employer. And that's the answer. You ready? Because I I love. Of course I didn't. Of course I didn't. No, 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 no. Than the flu, and then you went out and told the American public that this was just like the flu. Let me tell you something. We've had flu years. You told everybody else something else. No, and five times, right? Five times. You ever hear the expression five times? We've had flu years where we lost a hundred thousand people. The flu is a very serious problem for this country, also, and we've been losing them. Scott, what kind of a number have we lost over the years with flus into the hundreds of thousands? Well, I mean, the, the last five years have been something like 35 to 80,000 per year, every year, even with antiviral drugs and even with Flu vaccines. is a very serious problem also. But, but just so you know. This is worse than the most strenu deadlier than the most strenuous flu. Okay. And then you went out and said it's just like the flu. What I went out and said is very simple. Listen, what I went out and said is very simple. I want to show a level of confidence, and I want to show strength as a leader, and I want to show that our country is going to be fine one way or the other. Whether we lose one person, we shouldn't lose any, because this shouldn't have happened. This is China's fault. This is nobody's fault but China. China should not have allowed it to happen. Whether you have a one person, 180,000 people, or two and a half or three million people, which it could have been very seriously if we didn't make the moves. And when you look at the opposition, where they said, Oh, why did he put the ban on? Uh, Dr. Fauci said we saved hundreds of thousands of lives by putting the ban on China and then ultimately putting the ban on Europe. There was no lie here. What we're doing is we're leading, and we're leading in a proper way. And if, frankly, somebody else was leading it, they wouldn't have closed it. If you look at uh, Nancy Pelosi, you look at Cuomo, you look at de Blasio, you look at Biden, months later, they said there's no problem. They're talking about me. Months later, and before any statement was made, you have to remember, I put the ban on China. So obviously, outwardly, I said, it's a very serious problem. And it's always a serious problem. That doesn't mean I'm going to jump up and down in the air and start saying, people are going to die, people are going to die. No. No, I'm not going to do that. We're going to get through this, and we're right now, I hope, really think we're going to, we're rounding the final turn. And a lot of good things are happening with vaccines and with therapeutics. But there's no lying. And the way you ask that question is very disgraceful. Phil, go ahead, please. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I do Mr. think so. Mr. I think we did a great job. I think we did a great job. And the people that did such are generals, our admirals, Mike Pence, all of the people that have worked so hard, and now Dr. Atlas, and all of the Dr. Fauci, Dr. Burks, they should be respected for the job they've done. So you won't downplay you it again. You won't downplay it again. 
Because you said you downplayed it. That's what you told me. All I'm doing is, no, I don't want to jump up and down and start screaming, death, death, because that's not what it's about. We have to lead a country. We're leading a great country, and we're doing a great job. And the people that have done such a good job should be given the kind of credit that they deserve. We possibly have done the best jobs when you start looking at what we're doing with the vaccines and therapeutics and ventilators. We had no ventilators, John. We make thousands of ventilators now a month, and we're supplying them to the whole world. The job we've done is the best job. And don't give me any credit. Give the people that have done this the credit. They've done a great job. Yeah, Phil, go ahead. His ass was lying. First of all, to say we had no, gener no uh, ventilators is a damn lie. It's just a 100% lie. I mean, does that look, that's what you're going to get. If Donald Trump's lips are moving, he's lying. Joining me this week, Erica Savage Wilson, host Savage Politics Podcast. Dr. Greg Carr, Chair, Department of Afro American Studies at Howard University, and Reese Colbert, Black Women in Views. Um, just, just straight up ass lying, Erica. As simple as that. I mean, bottom line is, he. Oh no, that question is horrible. That's just a disgraceful question. No, you're a disgrace because you said Absolutely. something to Bob Woodward and you were lying publicly. Yes, the same Bob Woodward that has written 19 books about American politics. But I will tell you, Roland, where he was telling the truth, that the United States is, in fact, leading. We're leading in COVID infections at 6.39 million. We're leading in deaths worldwide uh, right now at just under 192,000. So if people want to continue on with a leader who could really care less, who believes that when he steps to that dais that he's actually presenting himself as a strong man, what he's doing is really furthering the fact that he is a pathological narcissistic liar, that he has no strategy, that he has no plan, and that what he does every time he steps up to address uh, the American public, as he um, disgracefully did today at three o'clock, <coughs> interrupting our days, was to really prove the point that the level of incompetency that this particular regime has demonstrated is not something that we can continue to hold on to for the remainder of 2020 and definitely not into 2021. Um, and, and, and the bottom line here, uh, Reese, again, when you look at what he said, he, oh, I wasn't jumping up and down. I wasn't trying to scare people, but you sure as hell try to scare about the caravan. And yeah. you want, want to scare uh, suburban white women about Cory Booker's going to come to your house when, hell, a lot of them wouldn't mind Cory Booker dropping by the house. Uh, then Antifa and everything else. And, oh, here come the scary black people, Black Lives Movement. Yeah, I mean, the bottom line is Donald Trump has always been the chaos president. <coughs> and the notion that he is somehow <coughs> has an aversion to panic, he didn't want the stock market to panic because that's how he measures success and economic success in this country. But he absolutely has no problem playing to people's fears and to chaos and creating panic, even where there is none. But the problem is not just a matter of his rhetoric being uh, lying and dangerous. The problem is his actions. We know how he refused to act on actually addressing coronavirus. We had ventilators that were out of date because he did not keep up the national stockpile that a President Obama and Vice President Biden left. We know that he you know, had a bidding war between different states because he refused to invoke the Defense Production Act. So this is not just a matter of Donald Trump's rhetoric uh, being dangerous. This is a matter of his inaction, his deliberate abdication of his responsibility, as well as his administration's responsibility to have a national response. And to me, the most damning part about all of this is that he thinks this is a good job. That alone is damning. Do you guys think it's a good job that most of us that are responsible are still stuck in our house, that we're retreating when it comes to testing, not no longer testing people who are coming uh, in from outside of the country, that we are opening up schools unsafely where schools have to close down multiple times? What about this response is competent and encouraging? Do you guys want another year, four years of this kind of great governance? I don't think so. People really need to wake up and realize that regardless of all of his lies, the actions and the fact that he thinks this is a good job is reason enough to vote his ass out. So here's what I find to be really interesting. Uh, Greg, so Bob Woodward should have called the authorities. Um, like who? I mean, to say, oh, if he was concerned, he should have called the authorities. Idiot, you occupy the White House. Right. 
I mean, what I keep trying to explain to people, Greg, about this, and especially these people who say, oh, Trump and Biden, they're the same. If you think you've seen insane in the last four years, you do not want to see insanity if Trump gets another four years. No, you're right, Roland. Um, by the way, I, I guess we went out tonight tonight with the black and gold. That's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. But, uh, I guess it's every Looking day good, tonight. guys. Looking good. You know, really, we did that. Right? For sure. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, it's funny. It, we're finally getting to the point, maybe, in this country where we are reframing the narrative. Donald Trump is only interested in one human being. That's Donald John Trump. He's tried to shrink the entire country down to one man, and he's successfully, he's worked, that's worked for a few people in this country. I like what Seth Meyers said the other night. Seth Meyers said, every time Donald Trump opened his mouth, it's like listening to slam poetry night at the head trauma injury ward. In other words, we have to stop treating this man as if he is mentally well and anything other, as Reese said, than a narcissist. He's only interested in himself. At this point, he is desperately trying to figure out a pathway to uh, re-election. He's collapsed the post office. He has called anyone with any credibility or competence from his uh, mm -hmm. leadership there in the White House. He has bought all in on Stephen Miller's ultra uber racist white nationalist terrorist agenda. And in, the, and in that exchange we saw today, that's the latest member of his playpen, that fool Scott Atlas out of the Hoover mm -hmm. Institute at Stanford mm -hmm. and his own colleagues out there at Stanford said, don't listen to this guy, a radiologist telling people masks don't work, children can't get coronavirus. Uh, a snake oil salesman is saying herd immunity is the way to go. Donald Trump has gone all in on the reality that only exists between those orange ears in his addled skull. So as a result, it was interesting today, Roland, to hear the word lie given to him in the White House. Perhaps we are at an event horizon at a moment when we can no longer, we don't need to talk about how many times he lies. The man is mentally ill, a narcissist, and determined to hold on to power by any means necessary. With that as the point of departure, we can now approach everything that happens. Uh, and again, it's just uh, it, well, people we, who don't understand what we're dealing with and people say, oh, you shouldn't be focusing too much attention. I'm trying to tell y'all, early this week, Mitch McConnell moved on another federal judge. Yes, they indeed. plan on moving on four. They have four yes. other federal judges queued up. They yes. plan on, so that's going to move them to about 207 or 208 federal judges yes. that are lifetime appointments. Y'all need to understand. And so <clears throat> understand the okie doke that these people are trying to play. All right, folks, back to my unfiltered video in just one moment. All right, folks, Seek.com is a black-owned company uh, founded by Mary Spiel. They have a couple of great products for you. First of all, they see these are amazing uh, headphones right here. Uh, these particular headphones uh, are Bluetooth, uh, tremendous bass, 360-degree headphones, 4D. Uh, you can use this for gaming if you're playing video games. Also, of course, listen to music, videos, you name it. Uh, and so, and Greg, yeah, they're great because they're in our colors, black and old gold. So that's kind of important. Uh, then, of course, they have that virtual reality headset here, which allows for you to pop your... Uh, Video, cell phone right into here. You can watch the uh, content, the virtual reality content right there on seek.com. You think you're sitting in the uh, in the room. Guys, put the graphic up, please. You think you're sitting in the room. Uh, and so, again, what you should do is be able to um, use the, uh, you can, like I say, watch the content. Or if you have a 360-degree camera, I have a 360-degree GoPro, uh, you're able to watch that video as well uh, with this particular VR headset and places you right there where it was. All right. To, to get it, you simply use the promo code RMVIP2020, RMVIP2020. Go to seek.com, C-E-E-K.com. And so we certainly appreciate them being uh, a partner here with Roland Martin Unfiltered.